5.5 million copies worldwide. The simple question, why is that? Um, why? Um, <laughs> I don't know, I wish I could answer it. Um, well, I've been traveling a lot. People, people think that I'm Swedish and then they think I'm French. And sometimes I get caught out because they realize I can't actually speak the language. So maybe it has something to do with maybe people think I'm from their hometown. When I was in France, they started asking me French questions on a live TV show. Yeah, it was like a, it was like a, a, a political show, you know, it was really serious. They were all really serious and they started asking me things in French. So I've decided to learn French so I don't get myself into trouble. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm a kind of... With your first album, what is going to happen next? Um, I have no idea. That's the beautiful thing though, isn't it? You know, I think if you knew what was coming, you'd be bored because you'd already expect it. Um, I had no real expectations for the kind of success um, of myself, really, because I was really happy with the music. I decided a long time ago to give myself a little bit of a break, you know? So what if I'm not going to tick all the boxes that I wanted to tick, as long as I was happy with the music? And um, I think that's the first place, really, to concentrate on. And then everything else is like a bonus, because you can't control everything, although you can try. I try. <laughs> When are we going to to hear a new album from, from you? Um, I don't know. But I think it definitely will play a big part in my perception, in people's perception of me as an artist, you know? If I make an, a record in another year, then you know? I don't really know. I guess it, it just has to be ready. When the music's ready and I feel like I'm really happy with it and that I feel as though I've moved on because, you know, when I started writing the first record, I was just 19, and now I'm 25, so it definitely would have to affect a different part of, of my growth. So, um, we'll see really, I have no idea right now. Um, song, song music is very big at the time in, in, in the world. You are a very good example for mm -hmm. me. Why, why do you think, why, why people love song music? Um, I don't really know about soul music to be honest i just think it's an honesty i think maybe like 25 years ago 50 years ago soul was like a genre you know it came from the church people used to sell their souls at the crossroads so they could play the blues guitar or something and now i just think it's about honesty we've become so we've come so far in music you know in the last 50 years that soul music is it's something you can't quite explain now, you know? After Elvis took it to a kind of a white place and then the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and Led Zeppelin and, you know, so many bands. And still today, you know, you could argue that Radiohead is soulful. I think it's, it's become really a, a, a vague description in music. But, um, so sorry, I didn't want to answer your question. Do you consider yourself as a soul singer? Um, I think there's elements of it, you know, um, I don't think I'm a pop singer, um, so I guess, I guess you could call me that. I think it's just about being honest, I suppose. Um, I, I bet you love soul music. What, what's the beauty in it? Um, that's not a thunderstorm, that's my stomach rumbling. That's embarrassing. <laughs> You no, no, no. That in. Of course. Not. Um, what's the beauty in soul music? Well, the soul music that I listen to is about 40 years old, so I can say it's soul music, you know? Whereas today, things that I like that are slightly soulful, I couldn't begin to explain what elements of it that I like, because it's just kind of, I guess it's a bit confusing, really. But um, when you talk about specific soul artists, um, I like things like Sam Cooke and... and um, that sort of era really because it was so important in history you listen to those songs and it's like going back in time it explains so much about culture about the i don't know the social dynamic of the way that they used to live it was really tough in those times i can't begin to even imagine what it was like but it was a very segregated time and you could really hear the angst so maybe soul music is a sense of angst that came from being segregated that came from the churches and a kind of 
sense of redemption. Maybe that's it. Maybe we've just discovered it. Maybe I've just made like a new thing with myself where I think I'm starting to understand what soul music is. And I think it's an element of desperation, you know. Um, when Sam Cooke wrote A Change Is Gonna Come, I mean, probably the most important song in history, really, because they really needed this change, you know, politically and everything. I don't really understand. I'm, I don't even know about politics, to be honest, but I know that there's something about that song that is truly magnificent.